Hello and welcome to Good Old Radio Vintage Radio Shows. Kick back, grab a cup of coffee, some favorite tea, and let's start the show. Today's show is the Quiz Kids Series presents eight anniversary show sponsored by Good Music Radio. Let's start the show. The Quiz Kids celebrating their eighth anniversary. Brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer for headache. Alka-Seltzer for acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer for cold discomfort. Only five more days before the big 4th of July weekend. So buy that extra package of Alka-Seltzer now and take it with you wherever you go. And now attention quiz kids, here's the question that we'll consider first this afternoon. How might you write the number 2000... So it would suggest one of you five quiz kids. Yes, that's question number one in our 418th broadcast, our birthday program, celebrating eight years on the air. And now here they are, the quiz kids and the chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. Thank you, Bob Murph. Five bright-eyed youngsters here in class to blow out the candles on our birthday cake and help us celebrate this broadcast that completes eight wonderful years on the air for the Quiz Kids program. Not one of the children in school today can remember our first broadcast back in June 1940 because the 12-year-olds appearing this afternoon were only four years old at that time. And as for the fifth member of our board, little seven-year-old Mark Mullen, why, he wasn't even born then. But we are going to hear from someone who can remember our first broadcast. Yes, our special guest this afternoon, ex-quiz kid Harvey Fishman, will speak to us from California. But even on an anniversary, it's first things first. And in our classroom, that means questions. So let's get busy, children, with roll call. Joel? I'm Joel Copperman. I'm 12 years old in eighth grade in Volt School. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 12 years old and I'm going into eighth grade at Lincoln School in Park Ridge, Illinois. Mark? I'm Mark Mullen. I'm seven years old, and next year I'll be in the third grade at the University of Chicago Laboratory School. John? John I'm John Galanis. I'm 12 years old. I go to St. John Bosco School. And Rennie? I'm Rennie Templeton. I'm 12 years old, and I'm going into ninth grade at U High. Okay, kids, who has the answer to that first question from Miss Mary Covington of Charleston, South Carolina? How might you write the number 2,000... So it would suggest one of you five quiz kids. We have four hands up. Joel's hand was first. All right, Joel. Well, I don't know the answer, but the, uh, the, you don't know the, the, the way you probably for. write it would be in uh, letters, and you'd probably make the line of division between the two words different, but I don't know. You could have, now let's see, you could have, I think the only thing you could have would be two dial sand, but I don't think I know what that would be. No, I don't think I do either, Joel. Uh, uh, Lonnie? Well, uh, this is kind of a uh, crummy, but uh, you, you could write it O two O O because that uh, is the number 200, and Joel Copperman recently uh, uh, made his 200th appearance on the quiz, kids. Uh, well, that's a, a very good thought, but however, it does not answer this question the way I put it to you. Rennie? Well, isn't uh, 2,000 in Roman numbers, isn't that LL? Uh, what, what was that again now? LL. No, no. No. No? Uh-uh. You're warm, oh, very that, warm. That, that would be, be 50. That's right. L is 50. M. Huh? What did you say? M. 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 M for 2,000. M is for 1,000. So it would be M, M, M. 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 Huh? M, M. But yeah. I don't... M.M. M. Mark. Hey, Mark Mullen. Mark. Mark Mullen or Michael Mullen? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, L is uh, 50 in Roman uh, numerals, uh, Rennie. Well, Mark, he got his brother Mike in there, too, didn't he? M.M. Well, that's very, very cute. Well, that's fine, children. That was absolutely right. And it gives us a good start on today's schoolwork. We're sending in that question. Mary Covington of Charleston, South Carolina, gets a Zenith Transoceanic Standard Shortwave Portable, the king of portable radios. You know, folks, it's easy to win one of these radios. You send in your question, and if the quiz kids answer it correctly, Alka-Seltzer sends you one of these fine Zenith portable radios. If the quiz kids miss, you get a big Zenith radio phonograph combination with automatic record changer, the new Cobra Tone Arm, two FM bands, a truly magnificent set. So come on, get busy on those questions. Send them to Quiz Kids Chicago. 
Well, here we go with question number two. Mrs. Grace Morgan of New Orleans, Louisiana, has me curious about this question. Where in literature would you go to find these strange animals? A heffalump, a tove, and a collida. Lonnie? The heffalump is on, in some books by A. A. Milne. The uh, Winnie the Pooh and, Winnie the, the, house Pooh. That, and the house that Pooh built. All right. And what was the second one? A tove. Tove, wasn't that in Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll? Well, it's... Uh, through the looking glass. Through the looking glass, that's and right. And what was the last one? Uh, Collida. Collida? Uh-huh. I don't think Mark? I know that one. That was in the... Al- no, uh, the, the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz, that's right, Mark. Yes, sir, Collida's in the Wizard of Oz. And what is it? Uh, is, uh, what? It has the head and like a... Tiger and the feet like a tiger and the body like a bear. That's right, half bear and half tiger. That's very, very good, Joel. Well, and the toves in the Lu- in the Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, he has his poem, The Jabberwocky. Very good. All right. Well, let's get along, kids. Uh, Mrs. Carl A. Bergston of Amityville, New York, wants you children to suppose that you have a puppy and you're teaching him tricks from the musical clues you'll hear on the piano. Can you tell what tricks your puppy has learned? Here's the first clue. Lonnie? That's B, E, and G, meaning bag. Bag? So you teach him to sit up and bag. That's right. That's the idea. Now let's see what else he has learned to do. Listen to this one. Joel? That's D E A D or play dead. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, our pianist Franz Fowl is going to play a real song this time. See if you kids can figure out what your puppy is doing now. Lonnie? Well, that's the uh, Minute Waltz by Chopin. Uh, right. Might be teaching him to. Uh do a jig or something like that. Uh, yes, you'd be teaching him to waltz around. And, uh, Rennie? Well, you could be teaching him to race. To, uh, <clears throat> they do have dog races, I think, sometimes. Well, uh, yes, of course, we're talking about puppies that kids have. Now, Lonnie? Well, that is uh, also in Chopin's time was known as the waltz of the little dogs. So That's maybe right. That would, uh, that, uh, oh, and it was, uh, because uh, it was inspired by... Sh- Chopin was inspired to write it because of his wife's dog uh, jumping around and everything. And That's right, yeah. The dog was changing his written. tail all the yeah. time, going round and round and round like that, see? Huh? All right, fine. Claude L. Howerton of Rutledge, Tennessee, remembers that when we celebrated our third anniversary way back in 1943, we announced that the children on our program had answered between 86 and 87 percent of all our questions correctly for the first three years. Now he wonders whether you quiz kids of the newer generation have done as well as the old-timers did. So I'm going to give you the figures, and you are to calculate how much our average has gone up or down. Up to, and including our last week's program, we have asked 4,530 questions of the 266 quiz kids who have appeared on the board. And, of course, that means that 4,530 listeners have received Zenith radios for their questions. Of those 4,530 questions, you have missed on 604 of them. How much has your average of questions answered correctly changed during these past five years, and has it gone up or down? Joe? Well, 4,530, well, I'll do this approximately. 600 over 4,500, that's 2 fifteenths, and, uh, and uh, 4 is 2 times 2, and... 32 times 15. What number did you start with, Joel? Uh, 4,500. No, I said not 4. Did no, you say I'm, 536? I said... 4,530 and missed 604. That's right. So that would be uh, 215. That would be 215. Or uh, that would be uh, 40 thirds. Or that would be 13 and a third wrong. So you have done 86 and two thirds. So you're just about the same. <laughs> That's very, very good, Joel. Yes, sir. That's right. I, uh, I guess the younger generation hasn't gone to the dogs after all. <laughs> now, before we consider this next question, Quiz Kids, here's Bob Murphy to remind you that there are only five more days before the big Fourth of July weekend. 
Buy that extra package of Alka-Seltzer now and take it with you wherever you go. Yes, friends, it's wise to plan ahead for that extra long weekend that begins this coming Saturday. Probably you've made your plans already, and if it's a little trip, take along some good time insurance in the form of an extra package of Alka-Seltzer. You never know when someone might get a headache or an acid stomach upset, and you may be a long way from a drugstore when it happens. But with that extra package of Alka-Seltzer handy in your car, you'll be all set to enjoy the pleasant, fast relief Alka-Seltzer can give. No use letting a thing like a headache or an acid stomach upset ruin your pleasure. Not when Alka-Seltzer can help put things right again, and in a hurry, too. So when you go to your drugstore for Alka-Seltzer, make it two packages instead of one. Keep one at home, as usual, and take the other package with you wherever you go. Remember, an extra package in the car can act just like a spare. You may not have to use it, but it's wise to have it there. Get Alka-Seltzer at any drugstore in either the small or the large economy package. All right, quiz kids, here we go with more questions. Mrs. Courtesy Murphy of Bismarck, North Dakota, says that children in the animal world play games very similar to those that our children play. She asks, what children's games or sports do the following animals seem to enjoy? First of all, the otter. Mark? The otter uh, has a slide on the mud bank, on the ice, or on the snow, and they also play tug-of-war with a stick. That's very, very good, Mark, my boy. Yes, sir. That's just what they like to do. And uh, how about the sea lion? Mark again. They play tag and follow the leader in tug of war. Oh, yes, and they have a big old time, don't they? Uh huh. You betcha. Uh, can you think of any other animals that. Uh... All right, Mark. The Rocky Mountain sheep play follow the leader of the rocks. Oh, yes. Oh, that's fun, too. Yes, sirree. So they think, uh uh-huh. Well, now, let's get along here. Two out of three on this next question. (laughs) Since we are celebrating our eighth anniversary today, Sarah Bullock of New Brunswick, New Jersey, wants you kids to identify the person or group who would have observed their eighth anniversary on these dates. The first one is uh, July 14th. 1797. Joel. Well, that's uh, eight, exactly eight years after the French stormed the Bastille, so that would be the French people. That's absolutely right, Joel. That's correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, who would have observed his eighth anniversary on March 31st, 1740? Joel. Well, that would uh, be eight years before that. It would be 17. 17- 32, so could that be Frederick the Great taking office? No. No. Lonnie? Uh, Franz Joseph Haydn, the music composer, was born in, on March 31st in Rora, Austria, in 1732. So that would be his eighth birthday. It certainly would, Lonnie. That's very, very good. <laughs> All right. Next one, June 26th. 1956. All right, uh, Joel? Well, that'd be uh, the quiz kids because that'd be 19, uh, for eight years from now, so that'd be their 16th, uh, eighth year, eighth anniversary from now. <laughs> Pretty cute there, Joel. What were you going to say, Lonnie? Well, June 22nd, uh, wasn't that last, uh, uh... No, June 26th, then, I said. Oh, June 26th. June 26th. Well, if, uh, if, uh, well, I don't know. I was, I was thinking of the same thing that Joel was, but, uh, like, if they start another program now, if, uh, if they should start another well, program. Well, you know what so I was thinking eight. about? Of course, I only asked for two out of three on this. Uh, I was thinking of one of our original quiz kids, Cynthia Klein, and her husband, Henry Kermy. They will celebrate their eighth wedding anniversary then uh, because Cynthia was married yesterday to a very fine young scientist, Henry Kermy, and they're now on their honeymoon, and we wish them all the happiness in the world. You know, friends, all of our former quiz kids, those now too old to be on the program, and there are more than 150 of them, are all doing wonderfully. And I wish we had time to tell you about all of them, but we haven't. However, ex-quiz kid Harvey Fishman is waiting out in Hollywood right now to bring you up to date on some of the old gang he knew. Harvey is attending UCLA, and on his side, 
editing a national teenage magazine, doing Hollywood interviews for a network broadcast, and this summer is working the switchboard of the Hollywood Colonial Hotel, which he describes as Hollywood's largest and finest of its kind, possibly because his father is manager of it. So now, sit tight for about six seconds while we switch all the way to Hollywood and quiz kid graduate Harvey Fishman. Well, hello to all of you from all of me. Old acquaintance shouldn't be forgot, so to help keep it alive, here goes a quick roundup of ex-Quiz Kid doings all over the country. Claude Brenner, who zoomed on the Quiz Kids not too many years ago, has just received his master's degree in aeronautical engineering from MIT. And though he's leaving for a short summer trip to his native South Africa, Claude will be back in the fall to take a look at some of the tempting job offers he's had. Jack Lucal, my pal, who was so ambitious about going into the diplomatic service that he once spent two years learning Chinese, is really hot on the trail of his career. He's completed two years at Harvard, and he's going on to Georgetown in the fall. Flash! Peter Reich will leave for West Point on June 28th. Flash! Peter Reich will enter West Point on June 29th. Nice going, Pete. Or should I say Mr. Dumb John, as you're going to be called at the point. Van Dyke Tears, the grand old man of the alumni and scholastic accomplishment, is closing in on his Ph.D. in organic chemistry at the University of Chicago. Van has already passed his oral and written tests, and after some more research, he'll have the degree. My old sidekick, Dick Williams, is really moving along. He's graduating this week with a B.A. from the University of Chicago, and he's going on in the fall to Pennsylvania, where he'll take some advanced work in architecture. This summer, Dick is working for an architect near his hometown, of East Chicago, Indiana. Here in California, who should I run into but Robert Easton Burke, he of the long legs in the Texas drawl, partner. And Joan Bishop, one of the original quiz kids, is on the coast, too. She's starring this week in a musical comedy that's destined for Broadway in the fall. Vanessa Brown, our quiz kid movie star, is still busy and glamorous, and she's just returned from a personal appearance trip to chilly Alaska. And say, when you look at these quiz kid marriages, a quick rundown shows that Margaret Merrick is a missus, Barbara Hutchinson Teeter is the first quiz kid mother, Betty Swanson and Sheila Brenner are both lovely and engaged, and of course you already know that Cynthia Klein married a young atomic scientist yesterday. I'm kind of wondering if her first two kids will be named Abel and Baker. Well, who knows if this marrying bug bites me. Maybe I'll get hit someday, too. But until then... I'll remain a happy, single ex-quiz kid, wishing all my pals a great big bundle of joy. Well, thanks, Sparky, for us. Now then, you can get back to your switchboard and we'll get back to our questions. (laughs) Here we go, kids. Margaret L. Southern of Des Moines, Iowa, wonders if you children know why the following combinations of letters and numbers were in the news headlines recently. Number one, XS1. Joel? Well, that's the new, uh, bi- uh, it's the new army plane, and it's, uh, it's supposed to be something new. It's uh, really terrific, and it just exceeded the speed of uh, sound, reportedly. Uh, it, uh, it's a fighter, and it's supposed to be the new fighter for around 10 years from now. Well, that's, uh, that's right. It's, it's a rocket plane, uh, Joel. Uh, that's fine. Now, how about uh, on this second part here, K-0-1-1. Rennie? Well, uh, Joe Lewis knocked out Jersey Joe Walcott in the uh, 11th round, and that was uh, in 2 minutes and 56 seconds in the 11th round. That's right, Winnie. Yes, sir. <laughs> 2 minutes and 56 seconds. How about this next one? 1,094. Rennie. Uh, 1,094, is that? Yeah, oh, 1,094. Oh, isn't that the uh, Republican convention? Well, it is it now. Uh, what, do you, I, what do you think? I, thought, I guess it is. I, the Republican convention gave up uh, uh, unanimously uh, Dewey on the third ballot. On the third ballot on the third of ballot. 1,094 yeah. votes. 1,094. That's absolutely right, Rennie. Uh, <laughs> okay, look. <laughs> We're doing all right on this anniversary program, aren't we? You bet we are, Joe. And say, speaking of anniversaries, here's a man who can tell you about one he observed recently. You bet I can. It was a wedding anniversary, and my wife and I had a wonderful evening. But for a time, it looked as though I wasn't going to be able to make it. I was at the office, and it was late afternoon when I rang for my secretary. 
Yes, Mr. Clark. Did you pick up that anniversary present for my wife, Miss Jones? Yes, I did, Mr. Clark. I have it right here. Shall I bring it in? Uh, no, call a messenger and have it delivered at my home. Why, all right, Mr. Clark, if that's what you want. Certainly that's what I want. I've just said so, haven't I? Why, yes, now, please but... don't interrupt, Miss Jones. As soon as you call that messenger, get my wife on the phone. And then I want you to cancel those dinner reservations at the hotel. But your wife is going to be so disappointed, Mr. Clark. Can't you... No, I can't make it. I have a headache. I couldn't sit through dinner in a show if my life depended on it. Now, get busy and get those calls through. Very well, Mr. Clark. But aren't you forgetting Alka-Seltzer? No, I'm not forgetting... What was that? Alka-Seltzer for your headache, Mr. Clark. Alka-Seltzer? Oh, of course. Why didn't you ask me that an hour ago? Couldn't you tell I had a headache? Well, it is pretty easy to tell when someone is troubled with a headache. And friends, Alka-Seltzer is the easy, pleasant way to fast, effective relief, too. Always remember that and keep Alka-Seltzer handy all the time. Then, when a headache causes grief, for fast and comforting relief. Drink Alka-Seltzer right away. Let Alka-Seltzer save the day. In the midst of all the excitement created by the Republican convention this week... Ruth Magis of Chicago sent in this question. The type of person suggested by each of these songs probably would not be nominated as a presidential candidate. Why not? Get two out of three. Here's number one. Well, now we had two hands up together right at the same time, Rennie and Lonnie. Let's see. Uh... Rennie can take it. Huh? Rennie can take it. Well, fine, uh, Lonnie. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies first. All right, Rennie. Oh, thank, thank you, Lonnie. Isn't that uh, when you come to the end of a perfect day? Oh, no, no, no. no. Lonnie? Well, let's see. If I had the wings of an angel, well, an angel certainly wouldn't uh, be nominated well, uh, for a no, uh, Well, now, wait, wait a minute, Lonnie. <laughs> they, uh... What is the real name of that song, son? Oh, the prisoner song. The prisoner well, song. Prisoner, the prisoner. That's right. The, the prisoner wouldn't be. If I had the wings of an angel, are some of the words, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. And the prisoner, what, would, what did you say? Well, the prisoner wouldn't be nominated then, certainly. Uh, that's right. Absolutely. Uh huh. In some states, the prisoner loses his citizenship when he enters prison. See. And uh, all right. Now let's see if we can get this next one. Rennie. Well, that's they're either too young or too old. So? And so, well, if he's under 35, it's uh, not legal. He can't, he couldn't be president. That's right. And if he is, uh, if he is too old, I I really doubt if they would uh, uh, nominate a man too old who they uh, thought couldn't uh, uh, live through his term. Well, now, of course, (laughs) you you never can tell, uh, really. Uh, Joe, what were you going to say? Well, uh, he doesn't uh, have to be below uh, 30, uh, above 35. If he's uh, maybe 34, then he can wait and take his office when he reaches the age of 35. Well, I don't know if that's ever been worked out that way, has it, Joel? No. Huh? No. Oh, he has to be at least 35 years of age. All right, here's the next one. Lonnie? Well, there's nobody's sweetheart now, that is. And? Uh, I'm nobody's sweetheart now, that's right, so... Well, uh... I don't know, except maybe that if there's only been one president who hasn't had a wife, and I don't think he can. <laughs> I don't think that's it, though. But, of course, a president is not necessarily noted for being a sweetheart. It's sometimes he has to clamp down on... Well, let's see what Rennie has to say. Her well, there's, there's something in United States politics called uh, vote-getting quality, and I don't think a man who was nobody's sweetheart would be able to do the party much good. Well, that's right. Absolutely, Rennie. That's the idea. Let the party <laughs> All right, Margaret E. DeVoe of Niagara Falls, New York, thinks it would be fun to try you on this question because it was asked on our very first program eight years ago. Let's see if you do as well on it as our first kids did. At a celestial tea party, you meet three guests, all famous in the field of the arts. One is deaf, one is blind, and one is minus an ear. What would each one talk about? Get two out of three. Lonnie. Well, I've I've heard that question before. I've read it in a book, but the answers are the one minus an ear is Van Gogh, a painter. That's right. And the one that is deaf is Beethoven. And who did you say the other one was? was uh, blind? Uh, one is blind. Well, that could be Handel, also a music composer. Yes. But I, I've, I've read the answers to those, so... Uh. 
Well, you're very Thanks. honest about it, Lonnie. I, we have some more answers here. Uh, Rennie, what were you going to say? Well, I think that Milton, if you count that in the arts, Milton that was Milton, also the blind. Milton, the English poet. That's right, huh? Blind. Uh-huh. And, uh, John? Well, it's a fictional character in the book, uh, Treasure Island, by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. There's a, a beggar uh, called the uh, Old Blind Pew. Uh, yes, that's, that's uh, true. Joel? Well, uh, pardon me, but Van, uh, it isn't Van Gogh, it's Van Gogh. And, uh, there's a story to Van Gogh uh, losing his ear. You see, uh, there was a waitress friend of his, and he was very poor, and she said, couldn't you give me a Christmas present? But he said he couldn't. So she said, at least you could give me one of uh, your ears, you know, sort of jokingly. So uh, a couple of days later at Christmas, uh, she received an ear in the mail because he was, he was, uh, it turned out, it turned out that Van Gogh was uh, crazy. As a matter of fact, he committed suicide in a sane asylum. Can I ask you a question, another yes. question, Joel? Did I say Van Gogh? Did I? No, Lonnie said Van Gogh. Oh, I see. All right. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Oh, dear. All right. Let's get along here now. Mrs. Thomas B. Sullivan of uh, Peabody, Massachusetts want you to think of common expressions that might be suggested by the new form which these characters in mythology assumed. What expression is suggested by the form into which Atlas was changed? What a common expression? Rennie. Well, that would be, uh, he was changed into a mountain, and so it could be old as the hills. Yes, that's, that's uh, one. Uh -huh. And Johnny? Well, uh, he, he was supposed to be changed into a stone. It's supposed to carry, uh, it's supposed to carry the uh, world on its back. Yes. So it could be, a. Uh, 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 Rennie was right. It could be a stone or uh, a, a large uh, a plateau or something. That's right. Uh -huh. As solid as the Rock of Gibraltar, say. Uh -huh. Well, special day or not, the old school bell always rings, and as usual, it means school is over. While the judges are figuring out the grades for your report cards, children, here's an important message for Mother about one-a-day brand vitamins and why the family should take them. Mothers, are you having trouble getting your children and your family to take their vitamins every day? Try giving them one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules. Each one-a-day brand multiple capsule contains all the vitamins for which the amount needed for grown-ups and children has been established. What's more, one capsule every day is all they take. And one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules are low in cost. A full two-month supply for only $2. Ask your druggist for one-a-day brand vitamins. Good for growing children and adults. Remember, for vitamins the easy way, for vitamins the thrifty way... The brand you want is one a day. Well, the judges have handed me the scoring for you quiz kids this afternoon, but remember, whether you win or lose, you will each receive a $100 security bond from the makers of Alka-Seltzer to help you with your future education. And I'd just like to say that I'm mighty proud of you youngsters, just as proud as I was eight years ago of that first board of young quiz kids. The years have brought us some really fine students and some equally fine and loyal listeners. And it's a great big thank you on this anniversary from the Quiz Kids program and our sponsor, the Miles Laboratories, to all of you. We also want to thank the prominent educators and educational institutions throughout the country who have supported our efforts to make a good education the aim of every American boy and girl. We are happy to have been associated over the years with the Miles Laboratories of Elkhart, Indiana, for it is through their wonderful cooperation that it has been possible to invite you every Sunday to enjoy the Quiz Kids in radio's most famous classroom of the year. Now then, today's scores. The judges say that as a class we missed, uh, well, we didn't miss any questions. Lonnie was first, Rennie and Joel tied for second. So you three will be back here in class next week to compete with two newcomers, Nancy McCleary, age 12, and Nanette Hector, age 5. That will give us a fine board of young experts to begin our ninth year of broadcasting. And all you listeners plan to be with us, won't you? Until next Sunday, then, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the quiz kids. Goodbye, kids. Bye, Bye Mr. Kelly. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank you for listening to Old Time Radio and the Quiz Kids. Please take the time to subscribe, like our videos, and share them with the world. We'd appreciate that. Talk to you later. Have a great day, everyone.